The Gorilla and the Earthquake. Night, night, dinosaurs. Ugh, night, night, Griff. This was the last time this friendly exchange would be heard before things changed. You see, the good night calls could be heard every night in the jungle, just at the base of Mount Spurtoma, the giant volcano. Griff the gorilla would wish the underground dinosaurs good night, and they'd call back up to him. Can you even imagine it? Dinosaurs living underground. But that's exactly what they did. For generations, the dinosaurs had gone about their business deep underground, near a volcano where Griff and his fellow jungle creatures lived above ground. However, every night, Griff called down to the dinosaurs to let them know that the sun had set and it was time for bed. The dinosaurs found this really handy, so they always called up a friendly, Good night! This was how it had always been, but one day there was some unexpected seismic activity that changed everything. Mount Spurtoma hadn't erupted in a long, long time, but on this day there was a happy earthquake. This is an earthquake that, although positive, brings about some pretty major changes. There was a rumble, there was a crash, there was a lot of dust. And then the underground tunnels the dinosaurs used started to move and shift. Tilly, the Tyrannosaurus, was knocked off her feet and landed on top of Barry, the Brontosaurus. Oh, that hurt, cried Barry as he tried to get up. But he couldn't, partly because he'd also been knocked off his feet and partly because he had another dinosaur on top of him. The underground world the dinosaurs lived in was under serious threat and Griff the Gorilla soon realised he was going to have to do something about it. He saw the ground moving and knew this wasn't good news. The rumbling and the crumbling went on for several days. Griff went down into one of the tunnels to see if he could find Rexa, the leader of the underground dinosaurs. Rexa was looking in a bit of a panic. Oh, it's all going very wrong. None of our tunnels lead the way they used to lead. All of our maps are wrong. Yesterday I tried to go into the kitchen and ended up in the toilet, roared Rexa. Griff was sympathetic, but he knew he couldn't stand around all day talking. Look, said Griff in a polite but urgent way, we're going to have to get you all out of here and into a safe new home. At that point there was an almighty crunch and the way in which Griff had entered had now completely closed. We need to get everyone out of here now. And there's only one way left. Rexa looked at Griff in a panicked state. They both knew what they were going to have to do. They would have to go out through the volcano. Rexa gathered up the other dinosaurs. Barry the Brontosaurus was still a bit miffed about having been sat on by Tilly, but he stomped down the tunnel to join the others. Griff explained to all the dinosaurs the only viable escape route involved emerging from the volcano and navigating the treacherous lava flows to reach a new, safer underground habitat. There were rumblings of discontent, but they were not nearly as loud as the rumblings of the happy earthquake. Rexa took charge. This is the only chance we have! We need to trust Griff and follow him through the volcano. Let's go! As they moved into the volcano, their biggest tunnel collapsed behind them. There was only one way to go, and that was carrying on through the volcano. First, they had to try to get through the unstable pathways. With so many collapsing tunnels and loose rocks, it was hard for them to find their feet. Several dinosaurs fell over, and that just made things worse, because have you ever heard a dinosaur fall? Oof, they make the earth tremor. And the earth was already doing enough tremoring. As they began to find their feet, Griff navigated them through the lava flows. This was incredibly dangerous and required them all to be courageous and very steady. Tilly, the Tyrannosaurus, started to get nervous and trembled. Keep the courage, shouted Griff. You can do this, Tilly. Just one foot in front of the other. The lava was hot and it sometimes ran in directions you didn't expect. The uncertainty was leaving the whole group very uncertain. Perhaps their biggest test was how to manage their own nerves as they slowly made their way through all these different trials. Rexa was a good leader and kept their spirits up. 
She had them singing dinosaur songs about being brave and kind. She led them in song as well from the front of the pack. Just as they were getting towards the end of their journey, they faced one of the worst trials of all. The smell! Ugh. The sulfur from the lava smelled of bad eggs. It was like an egg sandwich that had been left out in the sun too long. Ugh. It was super stinky. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to be sick, Barry the Brontosaurus was saying. Barry was known for being a bit dramatic. Come on, Barry, said Rexa. Just hold your nose and keep steady. Finally, they reached the volcano's mouth. The group must undertake now the most perilous part of their journey, sliding down the active lava flows to escape the imminent eruption. Each of them had to find some rock to stand on and slide down as if they were surfing. It was a risky move, and just as they were getting onto a large piece of rock, there was a crash. Another eruption. Barry fell into Tilly. Tilly fell into Rexa. Rexa fell into Griff. Everyone fell into everyone else, but everyone held on. They all worked together and steadied themselves. And as the lava flowed down the volcano, the dinosaurs and Grift surfed down on large pieces of rock. Down, 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 until they finally made it out, out and away from Mount Spurtoma and into safety. As they walked away from the lava and the volcano, Griff led them to a cave and a new set of tunnels, filled with water pools and plants. Rexa smiled. Oh, thank you, Griff. You've not only saved us, but this will be a great place for us to live. Do you promise to visit us? Griff smiled back. Of course. Do you promise to visit me too? Of course, said Rexa. At that point, they heard a huge crash. They looked around. Tilly had fallen onto Barry again. Oh, get off me, shouted Barry as Griff and Rexa laughed at them both. <laughs> Thank you very much to John for coming up with that very adventurous title, The Gorilla and the Earthquake. We took that and what a chase we had on and a lot of fun dinosaurs. John, thank you for your idea. If you have any titles you would like to suggest or characters you'd like to see in a future story, get over to the StoryQuest character creator at funkidslive.com. John, you are our story master this week. You gave us the idea for the gorilla and the earthquake. Tell us, what made that idea pop into your head, mate? Um, so when I sent this idea in, I was mad into King Kong. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, jo sorry, John. So you're into King Kong, right? But there's an earthquake. I know there's dinosaurs and they live underground. There's so much going on. What do you think could happen with a volcano that makes dinosaurs? What do you want to see in this story? Well, I would like to see the dinosaurs riding down the lava on little slabs of rocks, but doing tricks. What do you mean by tricks? Like surfing tricks, like backflips and things. Well, let me ask you this, John. If a dinosaur slides down a volcano, if he starts walking through Manchester where you are, what are you doing? Are you running away? Are you trying to be friends with the dinosaur? I'm trying to jump on his back to so try and ride him. Of course, but they're quite big. How are you going to do that? Um, with my bungee, um, with my things, with my shoes with springs on them. Of course! I can't believe I didn't think of that. Now, John, it's been a treat. Thank you so much for being our story master this week. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Got an idea for a story? Tell us the title at funkidslive.com forward slash story quest and we could bring your story to life. For a new story each week, make sure you hit subscribe or follow so you don't miss a single episode.